नमोत भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध साधु साधु so uh, the sutta today which we are taking is from samyukta nikaya it is 54 bracket 4 il on one occasion the uh, blessed one was dwelling among the sakyans at kapila vastu in nigrodha's park now on that occasion a number of bhikkhus were making a robe for the blessed one thinking after the three months with his robe completed the blessed one will set out on tour so over here uh, what they are indicating is that this is a rains retreat so that is a uh, rains retreat period is for 3 months and then uh, on the rains retreat period monks uh, stay at a, a certain location so they stay together and uh, uh, spend time in contemplation and um, uh, learning so that is the period uh, which is referred over here that uh, the uh, buddha will be Uh, waiting uh, over here for three months, and that three months they are uh, making a robe. So normally the robe ceremony is called katina. So uh, they are uh, uh, getting ready for that uh, robe ceremony. And uh, another indication is that he will set uh, out on two. So uh, that means that for this three months he will stay at one location, and then only the Buddha will travel, resume traveling. Mahanama. The Sakyan heard uh, uh, a number of bhikkhus. It is said uh, are making a robe for the blessed one. On thinking uh, that after the three months uh, with his uh, robe completed, the blessed one will set out on tour. Then Mahanama the Sakyan approached the blessed one, paid homage to him, sat down to one side, and said to him, "Venerable sir, I heard that a number of bhikkhus are making a robe." for the blessed one uh, now i have not uh, heard and learned in the presence of the blessed one how a wise lay follower who is sick afflicted and gravely ill should be exhorted by another wise lay follower so one uh, thing uh, bante uh, always points out is uh, uh, wherever the wise wisdom is mentioned it is uh, of uh, the understanding of the dependent origination so the buddha is uh, basically kind of pointing out uh, about uh, this uh, aspect that uh, or the bahanama is uh, that this person who is wise uh, lay follower is uh, i i knowledgeable about the dhamma and if he is kind of uh, approaching a gravely ill uh, uh, the gravely ill person who is about to pass away then how would he kind of uh advise that person a wise lay follower mahanama who is sick afflicted and gravely ill should be consoled by another wise lay follower with four consolations let uh, the venerable one be consoled you have confirmed confidence in the buddha so the one like a lay follower will kind of uh, reassure uh, the uh, person who is ill Uh, that uh, he has confidence in the buddha how is it uh, this is also a part of the uh, chanting which we do which is called iti pisu so the first thing which will uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, inform him is that you have confidence in the buddha he is a blessed one a worthy one a rightly self awakened one consummate in knowledge and conduct one who has gone the good way knower of the cosmos an excel trainer of those who can be taught so one thing about this is uh, important is that an excel trainer of those who can be taught so that means that the person who uh, the buddha is uh, teaching should be willing to kind of uh, accept the teaching should be open to uh, the information which has been given uh, to him so that is the important uh, factor which uh, has to be considered in this uh, uh, when the buddha is teaching that is the reason in uh, ganaka maha uh, ganaka moglana sutta the buddha says that i can show the way but it is up to the student to follow and uh, only 
uh, if the student follows my instruction, then uh, one can progress. Teacher of devas and human beings, awakened and blessed. So uh, one thing about the devas, uh, <coughs> it comes up a lot of uh, times in uh, India at least, uh, uh, because uh, there has been kind of a thing uh, uh, where uh, a certain group uh, kind of uh, don't like the idea of devas. So uh, the, I, uh, the concept of devas uh, uh, has been clearly mentioned by the Buddha and in this sutta also uh, has been mentioned. And uh, it has been mentioned many, many times that it cannot be considered to be a uh, kind of a dilution of the Dhamma or uh, kind of a, a, a thing which has been uh, later introduced because these uh, concepts are there multiple times and they are there in multiple uh, places where uh, the Buddha uh, Dhamma has been preserved. So that concept has been there uh, of the devas. Devas are uh, human beings who have done good work and have gone to uh, which are uh, pleasant uh, uh, destinations. Awakened and blessed. So that uh, is the first confidence the, uh, the person uh, kind of reassures. Uh, you have uh, confirmed uh, uh, you have confirmed confidence in the Dhamma. You have confirmed confidence in the Dhamma that the Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One. It has been well explained, well, uh, 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 instructions have been given, have been uh, explained well to, uh, to be seen here and now. So whatever uh, you are learning in the Dhamma, you will be able to see the difference. One uh, very simple uh, explanation of here and now, is being given in Simhata Nikaya itself, is that Buddha asks that uh, if you are uh, sitting in meditation, if you can see your mind, there is an unwholesome thought and you recognize it as unwholesome thought. And when you see there is a wholesome uh, thought or a wholesome state of mind, then you recognize it as a wholesome state of mind. That means that you have seen uh, what is there here and now. So uh, this also kind of ties into the explanation what Bhante uh, Vimalaram gives is uh, about uh, mindfulness, uh, is to uh, observe the mind's attention moving from one uh, thing to another and how this is impersonal. So if you are able to recognize uh, that your mind has uh, been distracted, that is the first step uh, where the, you are seeing the Dhamma uh, here and now. You are, see, you are knowing that your mind is in unwholesome state. Then you uh, release, you relax, you re smile, return back and remain uh, or repeat only when needed. So that uh, process by which then you know that you are on a wholesome object that is your object of meditation. So this way you know the Dhamma here and now. It is timeless, means uh, at, uh, that, uh, it does not affect uh, which era or which time uh, you practice their results will be the same. Inviting all to come and see. So once one person kind of experiences the Dhamma, then uh, he will naturally have uh, a tendency to say to others that uh, uh, they can come and see. It is called in marketing terms, word of mouth. Uh, uh, that is the reason I think the Hotmail was considered to be a big success because people used it and then they said that it is good and then asked the others. In the same way, Buddha's Dhamma when uh, one experiences, then one talks about it. And when one talks about it, uh, then uh, others come to see what it is. It is uh, pretendent uh, to be seen by uh, the observant for themselves. That means that uh, this is relevant to our times and uh, it can be seen by somebody who is willing to uh, put in the efforts. So that is the uh, confidence one has in the Sangha. So uh, in the Sangha, the confidence is that the Sangha, <coughs> the Sangha of the Blessed Ones, disciples who have practiced well, they have practiced as per the Buddha's uh, uh, instructions. The uh, Sangha of the uh, Blessed One, disciples have practiced straightforwardly. The Sangha of the Blessed Ones, disciples have practiced methodically. The Sangha of the Blessed Ones disciples have practiced masterfully. So these all are indicating that the practice which the Sangha does, 
is being done in a way where uh, it uh, is taking you forward. Uh, it, it is uh, kind of uh, being done in a proper manner where the Buddha is uh, teaching and uh, to the point that uh, one it masters the instruction. Uh, the Sangha of the Blessed Ones uh, are the four pairs, uh, the eight types of noble ones. Over here also there is one indication of the uh, uh, eight levels of the uh, awakening which Pante uh, Vyavadam she talks about often. One is the Sotapanna, uh, that is path. Second is Sotapanna fruition. Second is, uh, third is the Sagdagami path. Fourth is uh, Sagdagami fruition. Uh, uh, then fifth is uh, Anagami path uh, and Anagami fruition as sixth. Seventh is Arahant path and uh, eighth is Arahant uh, fruition. So these are the eight, uh, pay, uh, there are four pairs and there are eight types of noble ones. That is the Sangha of the Blessed Ones uh, disciples. They are worthy of gifts, worthy of hospitality, worthy of offerings, worthy of respect, the incomparable field of merit for the world. It is called the incomparable field of merit for the world because uh, you get more merit uh, when you are uh, uh, supporting the Sangha or you are uh, giving dana to the Sangha more than uh, you give to a living Buddha. So that is the reason uh, uh, over here the Buddha himself says that the uh, Sangha is the incomparable field of merit for the world. So uh, whenever you are giving uh, dana, then it is, uh, they say that it is better to give. The Bhante Vimalamsi also says it is better to give to uh, the, uh, by a mind saying that I am giving to the Sangha rather than uh, supporting an individual mom. So uh, whenever we also uh, uh, advise, we advise that you, uh, when you are making a donation, you make it to the Sangha. So you get more merit. And that's the reason uh, Bhante also says that we do not, say thank you. Uh, we uh, say anumodana means we rejoice in the merit you have made. So that is the word for, uh, uh, that is what is called anumodana. Uh, so this uh, gift which is given does not become a personal gift, but it is taken as a gift which is given collectively. Uh, you have virtues dear to the noble ones unbroken leading to concentration. What are the virtues of uh, 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 which are there, uh, which are uh, dear to the noble ones. These are the, uh, for a lay person, is five precepts. So the, those five precepts, one, if one keeps, then uh, they have to further uh, ensure that they are unbroken and then they are uh, more developed uh, in that sense that it leads to concentration. Because uh, uh, in one of the suttas also in Anmutranika, we had taken up, uh, we had mentioned that uh, uh, the the reason the, for uh, the ignorance also the cause for the ignorance is also the five uh, hindrances and the, the cause for five hindrances are the three uh, misconducts uh, of, from uh, uh, mind speech and body so those uh, things are the breaking of precepts so those things uh, uh, will lead to your mind which is uh, uh, has hindrances and that uh, mind does not uh, is not conducive to concentration. So if you are uh, following the precepts, then you will not have those five hindrances and your mind will be leading to concentration. So Bhante uh, Vyamadam she kind of uh, uh, puts an emphasis on the Sheila part and that has been very clear uh, uh, by Bhante that uh, Sheila is a kind of integral part of the practice. So, uh, Dana Shila Bhavana, that is the uh, path that uh, our teacher uh, teaches us. After a wise a lay follower who is sick, afflicted, and gravely ill has been consoled by a wise lay follower with uh, these four consolations, he should be asked, are you anxious about your mother and father? If he says, I am, he should be told, but good sir, you are subject to death. Whether you are anxious about your mother and father or not, you will die anyway. So please abandon your anxiety over your mother and father. If he says, I have abandoned my anxiety over my mother and father, he should be asked, are you anxious about your wife and children? If he says, I am, 
he should be told but good sir you are subject to death whether you are anxious about your wife and children or not you will die anyway so please abandon your anxiety over your wife and children if he says i have abandoned my anxiety over my wife and children he should be asked are you anxious about the five codes of human sensual pleasure if he says i am he should be told celestial sensual pleasures friend are more excellent sublime than human sensual pleasures this point uh, where the buddha is uh, talking about the uh, celestial uh, sensual pleasures one of the sutras the buddha explains that it is very difficult uh, to explain uh, the difference between the uh, the pleasure uh, one can experience as a human being and as a deva but he says i will make an effort uh, to do that uh, so uh, the human as a human being the uh, maximum pleasurable uh, situation you can be is a world reigning uh, monarch that is you are uh, the sole king of the whole of the earth at that point of time you have a lot of uh, uh, wealth you have a lot of loyal uh, ministers you have a lot uh, an army Uh, which uh, conquers without uh, fighting we conquers without killing anybody just by their uh, size and their uh, impressive formation the other side uh, gives up and joins uh, the king and thus he uh, uh, gets the whole killed kingdom without any uh, kind of uh, uh, shedding of blood and he has a lot of uh, uh, wealth Uh, in in terms of uh, uh, houses and in terms of uh, uh, wives and in, in terms of uh, uh, ministers and all those things, so that is the most pleasurable uh, situation a human being can uh, contemplate. That is, uh, if it is taken as a base, and that is uh, taken as a, a stone which is uh, of a size which the Buddha uh, picks up, then the uh, the pleasure uh, one can experience as a earth bound deva is uh, uh, the size of everest mountain so you can understand that the difference between those two are not something which you can even imagine so we cannot even imagine being a world monarch uh, but it is uh, to imagine uh, 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 the difference between a small rock and a everest mountain or er everest would be kind of impossible so that is the difference for a earth bound deva Uh, or here uh, the buddha is talking uh, the next uh, deva realm which the uh, buddha talks about or here is about the uh, four great kings that is the uh, uh, one about the, uh, uh, the 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 uh, celestial uh, that is earth bound deva so sublime and human sensual pleasures so please withdraw your mind from human sensual pleasures and resolve on the devas of the realm of the four great kings he says my mind has been withdrawn from human sensual pleasures and resolved on the devas of the realm of the four great kings he should be told the tavatimsa deva uh, friend are more excellent and sublime than the devas of the realm of the four great kings so uh, please withdraw your mind from the devas of the realm of the four great kings and resolve on the tavatimsa devas if he says my, uh, my mind has been withdrawn from the devas of the realm of the four great kings and resolved on the tavatimsa de devas he should be told more excellent and sublime friend than the tavatimsas are the yama devas the tusita devas the nimmana rati devas the parinimmana rati devas the brahma world is more excellent and sublime than the parinimmana rati uh devas so please withdraw your mind from the parinimmana uh, parinimmana vatta sat i am i am not able to uh, <laughs> pronounce this but uh, devas and resolve on the brahma world if he says my mind has been withdrawn from the uh, previous deva realms and resolved on the brahma world he should be told even the brahma world friend is impermanent unstable included in identity so please withdraw your mind from the brahma world and direct it to the cessation of identity so the buddha says that even the brahma world uh, as uh, it is the uh, and the deva realms is the highest realm but it is still a, a, a place where impermanence is there because if uh, 
one uh, uh, is reborn in a brahma world he cannot stay there permanently but uh, he can stay there for a long period of time many many mahakapas uh, he will be able to stay and we have discussed about the time period of the mahakapas uh, so this is a very long period of time uh, uh, even one mahakapa uh, but uh, if we consider this uh, even uh, whatever amount of time you uh, stay but that would be impermanent after that you will have to go to uh, your next uh, destination based on your uh, karmic uh, balance and it is unstable unstable uh, means that uh, there is a impermanence over there in the uh, uh, in the brahma world also there is impermanences there included in identity then that means that the uh, uh, atta is also there in one of the suttas the uh, one of the buddha goes uh, to uh, the brahma to ask a question and the brahma says i am brahma proper brahma and I, I have this qualities and everything. He is unable to answer uh, the uh, bhikkhu. So he starts praising himself. After some time, what uh, the Buddha does is, uh, uh, after some time, the, the bhikkhu who has gone, uh, the Brahma takes him aside and says that, oh, don't uh, ask me questions uh, before all the other uh, Brahma Devas because uh, they will know my ignorance. So he has this identity. He has this uh, sense of... Uh, 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 a, a personhood uh, and he is also trying to uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, protect his ego so as a brahma also and a para brahma also then that ego uh, factor uh, the identity factor is still there thus uh, the uh, buddha is saying that uh, even in the brahma world if your mind is there uh, that uh, will not you will not be uh, overcoming the impermanence which is there uh, which is the unstability which is there and uh, the identity which is there. Thus, you uh, direct your mind to the cessation of identity. If he says, my mind has been withdrawn from the Brahma world, I have directed uh, my mind to the cessation of <coughs> identity. Then Mahanama, I say there is no difference between a lay follower who is thus liberated in mind and a bhikkhu who has been liberated in mind for a hundred years. That is between one liberation and the other. So this is a very important point the Buddha is making. The Buddha is making that at this point of time, if the mind uh, is uh, uh, settled on the cessation of identity, the person uh, is equivalent to a arahant. Uh, in, uh, in many places, uh, uh, the Buddha is mentioning about uh, uh, lay followers and uh, bhikkhus. One, uh, one sutta in Vachaguta, he says that there are more than 500 uh, lay uh, women who are anagamis. Uh, there are more than 500 lay uh, men who are anagamis. There are more than 500 uh, nuns who are uh, anagamis, more than 500 monks who are anagamis. But for Arahant, he just mentions uh, 500, more than 500 nuns and more than 500 uh, uh, bhikkhus. So uh, he does not include the lay people. But in over here, the Buddha is clearly saying that uh, there is no difference between a lay follower who is thus liberated in mind and a bhikkhu who has been liberated in mind for a hundred years. That is between one liberation and the other. So that means that one who is liberated uh, from uh, this samsara based on the teaching of the Buddha have the equal liberation. So there is no difference between the levels of liberation. What liberation the Buddha has, his uh, uh, Pacheka Buddha will have the same kind of liberation and that also Savaka Buddhas will have the same uh, uh, liberation. That are the disciples of the Buddha who have learned from the Buddha and got liberated. It may be a lay person or it may be a monk. But this uh, happens at the point of time when the lay person is uh, on his deathbed. So there has been only a uh, uh, couple of instances uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi gives uh, the explanation that the Buddha statement thus indicates that the lay follower has become an arahan. Apart from a few instances of lay people who attained arahanship just before renouncing the household life, like Yasa, this may be the only mention of a lay arahan in the Nikayas and in his case the attainment occurs on the verge of death. 
So this is the thing about, uh, uh, this is a unique uh, sutta where it is being mentioned that the lay person has attained uh, arhant uh, hood. But uh, in other suttas, uh, Buddha mentions that when you are an anagami, uh, what is the time you will be uh, able to uh, attain uh, arahanship or the release from the samsara? So those are the uh, 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 these are the kind of uh, time period uh, at the deathbed. When you are at the deathbed, just before you are going to uh, pass away, that is the time you may uh, attain uh, arahanthood, or you may attain arahanthood at the time of uh, the passing away. That is the on the, in the process of uh, uh, you are passing away, you may attain uh, Arahantu. Then uh, the third uh, option is just uh, when the, uh, the uh, when the death has happened and the consciousness is leaving towards the Brahma world. So uh, before it uh, is uh, reached, it attains Arahantu. Then it can happen that at the time of uh, arrival at the Brahma uh, world, uh, when you are uh, you arrive and immediately you will be at, at, you will attain arahantu or you spend a very little time uh, that little time can be maybe a hundred of, uh, of years or hundreds of thousands of years because uh, the, there are five brahma worlds so uh, that after a little time you will be attaining arahantu or you attain arahantu after a long time that is by going through the five brahma worlds and uh, you uh, 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 reach that stage of Arahantu. So uh, for a lay follower also uh, who is an uh, Anagami, then he can attain uh, uh, just before his death, uh, he will be able to attain Arahantu. So uh, these are the uh, uh, sutta which is kind of uh, unique in the sense that it is giving advice which is uh, uh, to a lay uh, follower who is wise. That is the reason uh, uh, Mahanama says, who is uh, the, the lay follower who is on a deathbed is a wise, so he has knowledge of the Dhamma and the advisor is also wise. And in certain instances, uh, like uh, uh, instance of uh, uh, Anatha Pindika on his deathbed, the uh, advice was given for uh, Anatha. This is not me, this is not mine, this is not myself. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, he uh, was uh, reborn in a uh, uh, deva uh, realm, and uh, but he was a sotapanna. Uh, Anatha Bindika was a sotapanna. So uh, that is uh, kind of uh, uh, explaining the uh, advice one gives to a wise uh, follower on his deathbed. So if there are any questions, uh, then I am open to uh, questions uh, as of now. Uh, are there any questions for anybody? So everybody uh, understood it uh, well. <laughs> I think Ashok is on uh, this thing, uh, not on mute. So, is there any other person uh, who, who wants to get uh, Ashok? I put you on mute because uh, uh, there are some uh, background noise coming. So, is there any other person uh, who wants to uh, ask a question? Or, so, uh, or you can ask the question of any anything else also uh, if you have a general question about uh, meditation or any other thing. So we end it over here then. There are no questions. There are ones that are Yes. Um, I didn't, I, I could not hear you in the very beginning. Um, okay. I just caught, so I have two questions. One, one is, um, what, what is the, um, number or, or the name of the sutta? Uh, the uh, number of the sutta A, uh, is in Samyutta Nikaya, 54 in brackets, uh -huh. and this, uh, is ill. As okay, in okay, so, Ill. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, because I want to read if possible. Uh -huh. And also, I, um, I only heard the last um, 
um, the sentence you said about Sister Kema that she is not able to um, participate. Um, did you say anything prior to that about Sister? Yes, yeah, Sister her... had gone today. Uh, uh, I think uh, she did not know she had to go for a treatment. Uh, there was an IV drip uh, she had. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so there was an IV drip she uh, was administered. So maybe this is mm -hmm. the start of the treatment. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, she was very uh, tired after she came back. So she said, I mm -hmm. just wanted to go to sleep. So it would be three o'clock uh, mm -hmm. at that time. So now it would be about uh, three thirty. So she must have just mm -hmm. returned from the hospital. So she mm -hmm. uh, wanted to rest. Okay. Okay. If you, because um, I, I do not want to bother sister personally, but if you can pass on best pushes, I will. I'll, I will just write, but. Uh, yeah, you can maybe I, I, try after five or six. Uh, I think she should. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Bante. Thank you for everybody coming. And then if uh, nobody has questions, then we'll end this session. Okay, then. I'll share merits. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And uh, one more thing is, 